Brad Parks, Morpheus Data. We are a self-service orchestration automation tool for folks who are new to us. We're gonna spend uh, the next 15 minutes rapid fire kind of going into all of that, but we aim to bring self-service to the complex world of enterprise IT. And that complex world hasn't changed much in the last 10 years. It's probably gotten more complex for most companies, not less. This uh, is a, a visual I actually stole from uh, one of our customers a number of years ago. They had it smacked on a, a war room style room. They had a printout and they were documenting the 200 steps that it took to go from development team requesting a service to spat out on the other side in a fully accepted production ready state. Um, 10 years into cloud and DevOps, it still can take a lot of time to go through that process fully end to end, right? It's private cloud is more than just slightly better VMware. Yeah, you can clone a VM in a couple clicks, but knitting together all those pieces end to end is, is still a challenge for folks. And it only gets more complicated when you introduce public cloud and the shift from VM to containers. So that's an area we, we look at bringing together. A little more narrow on the focus though, the, the four areas that we're gonna to cover today where we're seeing problems come from our enterprises that we're talking to. First, still hybrid cloud management, that's kind of our wheelhouse, right, is unifying private and public cloud access. More and more though, we've seen the same central platform engineering team inside our enterprise customers pick up operational responsibility around Kubernetes. They're trying to deploy platform services and expose those out to their developer users. So how do they make it easy to build, manage, and consume clusters? Third piece, there are not enough smart automation engineers in the planet, right? There's a dearth of uh, people just not out there who have the skills around Terraform, around Ansible. We're trying to help people scale out their use of those automation technologies. It's another use case that we often get help with. And then lastly, service management, um, not in, in a classic ITSM ServiceNow sense, although that is part of this, but more, how do you monitor all these workloads? Do cost management? How do you do predictive analytics around how to right size, how to mitigate uh, risk? How do you bring some new tooling to the service management equation? So these four areas come up in every conversation we have with enterprises. I'd say our typical enterprise has a mix of VMware, AWS, OpenShift, Terraform, Ansible, and ServiceNow probably is the biggies that hit 60% of the large enterprises that we work with. Our goal is to pull those technologies together in a unified framework and give self-service access first for companies to quickly provision workloads and services into a mix of private and public clouds. Second, we wanna bring self-service to Kubernetes and containers. Third, give them a way to scale automation by turning that into a catalog driven approach with governance, auditability wrapped around it. Uh, and then lastly, one of the things that's a little bit newer area for us is, is moving beyond just pure play cost management, but actually things like service discovery, dependency mapping, try to tie into third party recommendation engines, some of the AI ops tools out there to provide self-service into the service management world. So those are four areas that over the next four sessions, my, uh, my technical team here is gonna go deep and do a lot of demo and show and tell, but that'll help, help set some context for you as we go through. Kind of flipping that 90 degrees, when, when we're out talking to customers, there are four groups that always we end up working with in, uh, in our enterprise environments. First is the IT ops team. And you know, five years ago when I started here, we'd talk to customers in INO who would acknowledge they had a problem, but they just didn't have budget, skill set, teams dedicated to solving this. Uh, fast forward over the last year, year and a half, we have seen more and more platform engineering teams spring up inside of our enterprise customers who have the charter to expose self-service in a more meaningful way to their customers, which is great. How do you draw the line between IT ops and platform team? Are they the same to you or is there a, a distinction there? I draw it wherever my customer draws it because it's, I, I'll, be, I'll be dead on. I'm not gonna get into a religious debate over where the line is because I, where is it cloud ops? What do you call it today, Mr. Customer? Because I think we've seen every variation under the sun. It's, I mean, uh, not trying to dodge it, but I think it, it has variability inside customers. It's a pragmatic answer, <laughs> Stan. I am not a politician, but I play one on TV. So. Fair enough. Okay. Um, you know, I think, you know, more seriously, I think the, it's you where we've seen it is usually part of, you know, part of INO, but it is a specialist team who 
has had some of those aggregated skills where they've come from automation. They've got some of the developer chops, but they're they're taking a more serious look at how do we get our act together as a centralized function and expose these capabilities in a in a more consistent way to internal teams. So for them, from a feature function perspective, some of the stuff we'll pry apart in the demo and in the discussion is how we integrate all those on-prem tools, tie into public clouds, uh, and also bring uh, automation into day two. Uh, but we inevitably, when we even though we sell to, we primarily talk to INO as, as a starting point. We also end up pairing with them as they go talk to their counterparts in security. And then for them, that's where we're talking about connecting into identity providers. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing in terms of credential storage and management and tying into automation, right? How do we set up groups and tenants and roles? I know we've got some service providers in the delegate panel, so that's definitely a core part. Talked a lot about enterprise. One of our other big groups that we sell to are global service providers. We've got folks like you know, British Telecom, others who have built managed services practices based on Morpheus, where they're using us in a multi-tenanted fashion to front end their hosted private cloud, but also broker workloads that are happening in the public cloud and even reaching down into customers on-prem environments with our distributed workers. So that managed service provider use case is pretty powerful for us as well. And we'll touch on that a little bit as we go through the demo. Third, developers core stakeholder. Um, I kind of blew right through it, but Craig mentioned our origin story when we were chatting uh, before, probably worth taking a step back. We're a very developer centric platform. Um, a lot of the earlier CMPs in this space, uh, I think, fell a little short because they, they met the needs of ops, but it kind of fell short when developers started going after them. We have a, a bit of a different design center. Uh, Dave Estes, our co-founder, who you'll hear from in a minute, and our other co-founder, actually, were working inside of my boss's private equity firm. Um, he would buy anywhere from a dozen to 18 companies in any given year, not tech companies, they were manufacturing, they were you know, power companies, got an e-bike company, right? Companies who were not necessarily tech savvy and they would inject technology into these companies, modernize their app stacks, put the digital front ends in place. This team going back eight, nine years had to build a platform to help them do their jobs more effectively, right? Before digital transformation was a marketing buzzword, before platform engineering was a thing that Gartner and others were talking about, that is what they were doing and that is where Morpheus came from. That's one of the reasons when we talk about these different personas, we try and give all of these groups the tools to kind of get out of their own way while still getting their core needs met. And developers are, are one of the core ones. Last is that finance user, right? How do we discover what's already out there, provide visibility into what's running on-prem, what's running in the public cloud? What does that cost you? How do you go into a single place to go through your public cloud invoicing, your private cloud? do chargeback and showback. Again, those are some of the features we'll talk about when we dig into the demo. Um, part of what we're gonna talk about is our plugin architecture. Um, one of the big things that we've, uh, we're very proud of, that's why we went in a lot of our deals, is our time to value. So we've built a very robust abstraction framework, right? We've abstracted just about every piece of hybrid IT when it comes to self-service. And as part of that, we have built a very robust set of out-of-the-box integrations, right? When we walk into a customer environment, our pre-sales engineers are disappointed if they don't have a POC up and running in kind of a minimally viable state within an hour or two. And that means we're connected to your vCenter, we're tied into your identity provider, we're getting IP addresses from your IPM tool, we're exposing self-service in a way that you can provision databases and web services very quickly. Uh, and that's because for us, integration does not mean go download a script, write a bunch of code, go talk to some open source guy, go find a vendor who will sell you, a, you know, an integration pack. We want to do that out of the gate. That said, we have spent the last year, year and a half, that's probably something we'll talk about a little bit more, is exposing all those abstractions in a plugin frame. Not going back on our word, we're still going to curate the vast majority of our integrations, the ones that our customers use day in, day out. But we've had third-party technology alliances like Rubrik, Cohesity, Cumulo, others reach out to us and say, hey, we would love to integrate with you at customer X. We'd like to take that on. We'd like to do that work. We have teams dedicated on integrating into platforms like yourselves. So for a lot of those, we're able to maybe kickstart that work, open source it, give it back to those technology alliance vendors to help take that work on and, and move that forward faster than we can. So that's something we're pretty excited about 
Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. Being agnostic applies to more than just tooling. It is also the clouds that we're provisioning into. The real power of the platform is being able to blueprint services and provision those just as quickly and easily into your vSphere, your Nutanix, your AWS, your Azure um, in a consistent way. What we usually find in a lot of big enterprises though, is it can vary by team, right? Project team A, big fans of cloud A, right? They're gonna use some of those cloud native services. They're gonna have their patterns. Team B, using stuff on-prem. Team C, they just got through an M&A, maybe he's using GCP. When you get those mixed environments, there are a lot of functions that need to happen horizontally, right? Things like governance, chargeback, tracking, right? Processes that need to happen in a consistent way across cloud endpoints. And that's really where we come in uh, is being that lateral cross cloud control plane. Uh, one of the other pieces we'll touch on in the automation section Martez is gonna take is our, our workflow engine. So in addition to attaching phase-based automation to every workload that we're provisioning, right? Tracking the life cycle of your database, your app server. We also have introduced over the last couple of years, operational workflows. So these can be tied to you know, any number of day two operations. Think about the, the non-sexy, but very important work that is IT all day long, right? A lot of tasks and scripts that are just tied into a given engineer on, on the data center floor. We're able to take those put them in a catalog view, track them, audit them, make them consistently executed by folks who may not have written them, may not have the depth of automation uh, experience that they have. All right, lastly, uh, I touched a little bit of this as I went through, right? Our integration time to value is something we're very, very proud of. Feel free to pick that apart as we're going through. Um, reducing tool sprawl, right? We've seen some opportunities to help customers minimize some of their isolated tools, having to have a combination of a tool from VMware, a tool from ServiceNow, a tool from Ansible, Red Hat, just to do some of the governance that really should be thought of in a lateral way is, is a big piece for us. Third, trying to give people degrees of freedom, um, right? As things are changing in the on-prem hypervisor space with Broadcom's announcement around VMware, a lot of folks are looking at how do they have some degrees of freedom, right? And so being able to think about automation orchestration in a more agnostic way appeals to most enterprises that we talk to. Uh, and then lastly, a lot of the companies that we talk to have tried to go down this path, building their own platforms with sheer scripting and manpower. And they realize that that runs out of steam when you get outside of an individual work group, it doesn't scale very well. And so uh, part of what we aim to do is to bridge that gap and give them a more sustainable place to tie in their workflow needs uh, that doesn't rely on any one engineer who happens to leave, or if they change from cloud A to ch cloud B, they have to spend another six months rewriting a whole bunch of scripts. Just looking at the logos and everything, yeah. it seemed like the scope of orchestration that you're talking about is primarily what I would call just infrastructure. So I didn't see suggestions of anything dealing with as much with application development or databases or other cloud-based services? Is that just because you can only fit so many things <laughs> on a slide or is that you know sort of your focus? Well, provisioning that infrastructure on behalf of those application developers is a large reason we exist, right? Being able to call us from a Jenkins after you do a build and automatically get your environment on demand, right? Um, also, we do tie into a lot of the uh, cloud native blueprinting engines, right? So using us to model out a cloud formation or an ARM as part of your development process is one of the things that we'll tie into when we go into the, the tech demo is the strength of our API, right? It being able to use us natively in that space. And I was at the DevOps Enterprise Summit a number of years ago, and it was interesting compared to like a VM world, right? The, it was 90% dev with 10% ops, even though it was a DevOps environment, right? And they still complained that they had fully automated, you know, test cycles, right? They had, they had done a lot of work on the front end, but when it hit production release and ops had to stand up that environment was where there was still a tremendous amount of friction. So that is where we spend a lot of our time is getting rid of that friction. But um, honestly, most of our internal stakeholders at our customers are serving 
internal development teams who are using a lot of the tools that you mentioned. So doing it in a way where they can still actually use those tools, but they never have to talk to another ops person again. 